Then we can continue with the next interesting topic uh, within our lecture, and this is resistance. So, as we already said, uh, we have conductors, we have something where current goes through, so we put some current in, and the same current, if no current is lost, and usually no current is lost, will go out. And um, if this material um, is not a superconductor, there, there will be other atoms and stuff in there that will somehow hinder the flow of current of electrons. And so there will be some counter force and this counter force will generate a voltage drop. And now we could measure the voltage between two points. Let's call them A and B. Uh, so measure potential here, measure potential there, measure the difference between the two and we get voltage. And so now if we divide this voltage drop by the current, we get resistance, resistance between these two points. Um, resistance of a wire, for example, in this case. And so the unit of the resistance is volt divided by ampere. And this one gets a new name and we call it ohm. And it gets the Greek letter, capital letter omega for, for ohm. And ohm was a German physicist. Um, he was born 230 something years ago um, in Erlangen. He died in Munich. Um, his grave is also on the old Southern Cemetery in Munich. Um, I think you can still visit it there. And so after him, um, this unit is named or coined. And so he also found out that this ratio here um, voltage divided by current, what we call resistance, if you have typical metals, if you have material like this, that this will be in most cases a constant. So there's always the same ratio between voltage and current. And so if we look at this, and this is what we call Ohm's law. And if you look at this today, you would say, okay, whew, this, is, uh, this is not too complicated, right? Um, I, I mean, um, it's, it's just a linear function between current and voltage, and there's just always the same ratio between current and voltage, and this ratio we call resistance. Mm, what, what, what the heck? What, what, what was so difficult to find out about this, this Ohm's law? And the thing is that, of course, uh, when this guy found about this, um, this law, um, he, he, he did not have a nice multimeter like this, and he had no nice measurement instruments and so on that would directly measure current and voltage. And there were also no real batteries that he could use for his, his experiments and so on. So the, the difficulty in his analysis was to set up some, some laboratory <laughs> equipment that would that would enable him to do these measurements. <clears throat> and so what was used as batteries at this time were so-called um, Daniel elements or also voltaic pulse. So you take different uh, metals like uh, copper and uh, zinc and you put them into a light acid or into some water and then there will be also some voltage measurable between these two metals. Um, it's kind of small, so you need more of these cells, connect them in series to get um, a nice voltage. But you cannot regulate the voltage. And the voltage will also change and um, depending on what is the temperature and what is the, 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 the acid and the process there and so on and so on. So it's, you can create some voltage, but it's not very stable, it's not very reliable. So the idea that he came up with is to use a thermocouple. So this is, this is his um, original uh, experimental equipment that he used. And so that's a picture from Wikipedia. So you have this, on this side, this is this thermocouple. And one side um, you would, so it's made out of bismuth, another strange metal and you put one side into very cold water, you put one side into very hot water and then you get a voltage drop across this thermocouple. And the nice thing is this voltage is 
very constant and you can um, somehow change the voltage by changing the temperature difference. So this gives him a nice voltage source where he can change the voltage and the voltage stays stable. And then the next thing is uh, he would need to be able to measure current and um, yeah, so what is here on, on top, and this is, that's why it's called a torsion balance, is, don't know, uh, don't ask me how exactly it works, but current charge makes forces, you somehow measure these forces on a, on a torsion balance. So this is voltage source and amp meter in the very same device. This is what he developed, and with this he measured the ratio between voltage and current in different metals and for different elements. And this is his origi original lab notebook um, that uh, is still there. And if you zoom in and zoom in, um, so this was the, the finding the definition of the Ohm's law. This is the resistance, this is voltage, this is current. So just it's, there's some proportionality between them. Um, and this is what he found out. And Yes, okay, so you could write this formula also in this voltage triangle if you like, uh, we can think about this in a second. And so I would uh, propose to do another experiment um, and try to measure this current voltage characteristic. And we can do it for a power resistor and the power resistor, now I need to remove all of this here and maybe put it here on this table somewhere. So this is my power resistor. Um, we, can, we can try to measure the resistance of this one. And there's of course the resistance where my thumb is right now. The resistance is also printed onto this resistor, but I will not show it to you right now. So this is my power resistor. And power resistor means just that um, I can really feed some current through this resistor and the resistor will heat up and there's a large metal surface that is able to dissipate, dissipate the heat. If you take very small resistors, um, the usual resistors that you use on printed circuit boards for other purposes, so um, I have several one kilo ohm resistors here. So these resistors also work nice, but they cannot dissipate so much heat and they are not so nice for this experiment. So uh, I have lots of other uh, resistors here. But we will use this one. And now we use, we need to have my lab power supply here. And the next thing is, does anyone of you have a computer? You have one? Does anyone else have one? Because I need, I, I now also need your support because I've prepared two tables. Um, one for the power resistor and one table for the diet. And you can scan it with your, with your cell phone. I don't know, it, it, if you use it on a cell phone, it, the, the screen might just be very, very small to insert numbers in the to -do table, but you can try. If someone has an iPad or something like this, maybe, maybe you, can, you can try it with your computer. Can you scan this code and... Oh, there's someone um, prepared. I mean, otherwise I can also try to do it myself, but let me know if this works. This would be... This would be great. It also works with the smartphone, right? Okay, just there, this, this screen might be very small. So what I've prepared there, I can click on this also uh, right now. I've prepared a table, one for the resistor. It should be empty and one for the diet in our Ofku cloud. And uh, it should open up in like an office program and um, yeah, and I also see that there are other 
users active, which is great. Okay, so, and, and the other one should also open up here. So I've prepared a table. We can insert values in this table and they should be automatically plotted into a diagram. So let's start with the resistor. Um, so here's my camera. And of course, I also need some, some cables to connect this. and connect one cable to the plus terminal and the other cable to the minus terminal. And then the nice thing about this uh, lab power supply is that it is able to directly measure current and voltage. Okay, and it's already switched on. Uh, the lowest voltage that I can do is 0 0.5 volts. And for 0 0.5 volts, we get 2. Point uh, 0.221 ampere. So is, is anyone able to put this into the table? Who, who will do it? Are, are you doing it? If, 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 if this works right now, magic should happen and someone puts this, as you can see, someone puts these values in the table. You, you need the value again, right? Hopefully my computer will survive this. Okay, 0 0.5 and 0 0.221. Okay, excellent. So then I will ramp up the voltage and I will go in steps of, uh, at first of 0 0.1 volts. So if we have 0 0.6 volt, then we get 0 0.263 ampere. So, yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I think the problem is that, yeah, I'm so sorry. It's a, it's a, of course, it's set to German settings. Uh, and that's why we, I think we have to use a comma. And then it should work. So sorry for this. Can you, can you also use a comma on your, on your device? Okay. So let's continue if we go to 0 .0 0 0.7 or 0, 0.7 exactly, we should, uh, we get 0, 0.7305 uh, volts. So temperature is still okay. Of course, there is just uh, less than half a watt that is now dissipated. So I will go to 0 0.8 volts and then if we, if we are at one, we will maybe go with larger steps. So 0 0.8 and for the voltage and 0 0.349 for the current. And then you can see that if we, uh, the, the table automatically calculates the ratio, that the ratio stays more or less constant. The ratio is, if you look more carefully, it, it somehow goes up. Do you have some idea why the ratio might go up and does not stay perfectly constant? Yeah, because there is now some current and voltage in this resistor. So there is power <laughs> dissipated in this resistor and the resistor will heat up. And it's not, you can still not really feel it, um, but, but it is there. And so that's why resistance a little bit goes up. Okay, then I will try to go in larger steps. We will maybe go to 0 0.5, uh, 1.5, sorry, 1.5 volts. 
And then we have a current of 0 0.657 ampere. Thank you. And I will go up to 2 volt. And for 2 volt, current is 0 0.883. And then let's maybe go up to 2.5. And for 2.5 volt, the current is 1.103. Okay, and so now if you check the ratio once again, you find out, okay, ratio now once again is going down. So maybe, I'm not sure, maybe the measurement of... Um, Currents is also not super exact at small values. Maybe this is just within our measurement uncertainty in this case. Um, okay, so if you plot current against voltage, you more or less get a straight line. And this is also what you would expect for a resistor that voltage and current have the same ratio. This is Ohm's law and Voltage divided by current gives resistance. Okay, so this is what happens for this power resistor. Okay, so now I have a second table. Um, it's trying to load again. Okay, so in the second table, if I zoom in, I have prepared another empty table. Uh, once again with current and voltage and with one thing that calculates the um, resistance and um, I will so yeah now it's uh, now it's getting hot now you can not really but almost burn your fingers um, so I have a second element somewhere Ah, here, here it is. So I have a diet. And uh, this is also some kind of larger diet that is able to withstand some considerable amount of current. Um, but still the diet will limit the voltage drop to, as we will see, somehow like 0 0.7 volts. And... Um, yeah, of course, I have connected a red and black cable to this diet. But if you would check, there is some, some ring here along this diet. And the ring is also the cathode of the diet, the negative, the, the minus pole. And with this cables, I should be able to directly connect the power diet to my power supply. And before I will connect, I will go down with the voltage to the smallest setting that we had to 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 volts. And the current is said to be limited to 4 ampere in this range. So let's connect this diet. Um, it's somewhere here. This. Yeah, you, you cannot see the diet, but trust me, it's there, and I will switch on. <coughs> and why is nothing happening? No. Okay, so we have 0 0.5 volts. Um, and we have no current, no current through the diet. Okay, so let's, oops, let's go up with the voltage, 0 0.6 volt, still nothing happening, no current through the diet. Okay, so I will go up a bit more 0 0.7 volts still no current through the diet 
So then I will go up in smaller steps. Okay, this was this was maybe too large. So for 0.72 volts, we already get 0.051 ampere, so 50 milliampere, 51 milliampere. So now if I go up in very small steps with the voltage, just 10 millivolts more, we already have something like 70 milliampere, but it's changing a bit. If I go up to, uh, oh, you, you, now, now the current values are missing, right? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was too quick. So here we had 0 point, yeah, 51 milliampere, so 0 0.051. And so maybe maybe let's let's go to zero point seven four. Then we already have something like ninety seven. I don't know why the values are changing that much. Um, but there's some, of course, there's some voltage regulation going on in the background. And now as we have this very nonlinear effect, uh, it's maybe some artifact that we see of the voltage regulation. So let's go up in further steps of 20 uh, millivolt. So for zero point seven six, are you still typing? We have 165 milliampere. Sh sh should I try to help a bit? Ah, okay, now, now it's updating. Okay, excellent. And so let's go up another 20 millivolts. And so then we have something like 300. Let's, let's wait a bit until the... Um, uh, the voltage control here, 265, 270, still changing a bit, something like this, okay. And I will go up another 20 millivolts, and then we have, we get a, around 380 milliampere. And let's maybe go another 20 millivolts up. And then we, you can see now, then now we get something like 500. Um, and then let's take a last value if I go up another 20 millivolts. And now the diet is also well, getting a, maybe a bit warm. We get something like 660 something in this range. Okay. Oops, excellent. So I will switch it off once again. Uh, thanks for noting down all the values. Uh, but unfortunately, something does not work. Um, because maybe I'm not sure what happens here in this display. Ooh. Uh, these cloud documents don't seem to be super reliable. So, 
So here, of course, if you um, have 0 0.5 divided by 0, it does not make sense. You get a very large resistance. But here we should get something. I'm not sure why it's not displayed. And I'm not sure why we don't see anything in my table. Something is screwed up here. In the other table, it works. Hmm. Okay. Anyhow, so uh, I don't know why nothing is displayed here. Uh, maybe the range does not fit. I'm, I'm also not sure why the calculation here not works. The values look reasonable. Um, but if you plot it the other way around, and here also it does not make too much sense, um, but what we see here is, in this case, you don't get a straight curve. Um, you get something like an exponential increase. Um, this here should be the current in milliampere, and this is the voltage, but it's obviously not in volts. I think it's just numbered by the, by the values that we have here. And what you should get here is the exponential characteristic of a diet. Um, at least this is what we have measured. I'm, I'm not sure. I would have to check the table here. What, but yeah, so, something strange is going on here. I had different problems with our cloud storage today. But um, the message here is not everything behaves as a resistor. And this Ohm's law will not be valid each and everywhere. There are elements uh, that have a nonlinear current voltage characteristic, like diodes, like transistors, everything that is a semiconductor device. 